This video is on the Black-Scholes pricing model. Now this is a mathematical model that enables us to calculate out the value of options. So what we're talking about here is we're calculating out the value of the right to enter into a transaction. So not the value of the actual transaction, just the value of the right to enter into a transaction. It's a very complex idea and this equation helps you do it. Now this equation was first published in 1973 by Fisher Black and Myron Scholes and their work was actually given a Nobel Prize in 1997. And to give you some idea of what we're talking about, there are few equations that have had such an impact on humanity as this equation. I mean, this enabled the option markets um, around the world. It's a really cool equation, so we're going to talk about how it works. So what this does, and I'm going to put up the equation, and what you can see is there's some pretty advanced mathematics going on in this equation, um, but you don't have to know all of the complicated math to be able to appreciate what this equation is telling us, because there's a very uh, important concept going on here. And it goes back to this central economic idea, and I've talked about this again and again in some of my videos. And the idea is this. The higher the risk, the higher the return. It's this very central idea that is the cornerstone of finance. And so what we're saying is, is basically, if you are going to value an option, the riskier that option is, the riskier you're going to receive a payout from that option, the less value you'd be willing to pay for it. So. Um, let's use a stock option, for example. If you were going to buy a stock option, the option to buy some stock in the future, the more, uh, the more risk there was, the more uncertainty you had that this option would result in a payout, the less you'd be willing to pay for that option. The more certain you'd get a payout, the more you'd be willing to pay for it. So that's basically how this calculation works. And it works by using five different variables. And here's what the variables are. You look at volatility, time to maturity, current price, exercise price, and risk-free rate. And so you look at the assumptions you're making for those five variables and then you plug them into this equation and then the equation will spit out a value for how much you should pay for this option. So let's talk about some of these variables. Time. Now time is a big driver in options and you can buy options for different lengths of time. And what you see is, the longer the time period, the more uncertainty. The less li likely you're going to know what's going to happen in the future. And the more risk, the lower the value of your option. And what you see is, as you decrease your time scale, the lower the risk. I mean, if you decrease your time scale to a, a millisecond before that option um, expires, you're going to have a very good idea of how much that option is going to be worth. You're going to know what the payout's going to be. And so there's very little risk there. Um, but as you increase this time period, the more you increase your risk and the lower the value for the option. So let's look at current price and exercise price. Now, <laughs> this is going to be a little different depending on whether the, you have an option to buy or an option to sell. Um, but basically, the further the current price is from the exercise price, the more uncertainty what, of where um, it's going to be in the future. So, um, 
if you have, let's say, a, if you have an option to buy stock and you have an exercise price at $100, the, fur, the further away this price is from $100, you, the stock price has to correct above $100 for you to make money off of this payout. And so this difference between the current price and the exercise price is another driver of the value of this option. And then of course we have the risk-free rate. And the risk-free rate comes into the calculation whenever we deal with forecasts of the stock market. Now, <laughs> the cool thing with this formula is there's lots of calculators available online that will help us calculate it out. So you don't have to actually sit down and write out the, this equation. You can, if you, as long as you understand the variables and understand what are your assumptions, what are the assumptions you're making, and then you can take these variables, plug them into a calculator, and it will spit out a value for you. So let's plug in some actual numbers um, to give you an idea of how this calculation works. Um, we're going to start out, we're going to use, for volatility, we're going to say 20%. For time to maturity, we're going to use one year. For current price, we're going to use $100. For exercise price, we're going to also use $100. And for risk-free rate, we're going to use 5%. And we're going to say this is an option to buy stock. Now, if you plug in these variables into a calculator, what you'll see is that the option is worth $10.45. So, the option to buy $100 worth of stock a year from now is worth around 10 bucks. That's the right to buy something, 10 bucks. That's very powerful information. And to expand our understanding of how this calculation is working, we can actually create a table um, to understand the sensitivity of some of these variables. So I'm going to put up a table and you can see if we keep all the other variables the same but change where the current stock price is at, this gives us a sense of what it will do to the value of our option. So you can see here we have $50, $100, $150. So at different um, current prices, this will tell us what's going to happen to uh, our option price. And you can plug these variables into your calculator and figure this out on your own. Um, but what we see here is that for uh, $50, if the current price is $50, the option is worthless. Because what's that's, what that's telling us is, if the current price is at $50 and we have an option to exercise at $100, the likelihood that this $50 stock within a year is going to get up to $100 is very unlikely. And so you're not going to be willing to pay very much for this option. Now let's look at the $100 option. So at $100, which is the example we looked at before, the current value of the option is $10.45. But what's interesting to see is that the future value is zero. And so what's that saying is, if, if the stock price stays at $100 for the next year, you're not going to be able to make any money. <laughs> you need the current price to be above the exercise price to actually make a profit. Because what's going to happen is you're going to buy the $100, buy the $100 worth of stock and then hopefully turn around and sell it at a higher price for a profit. That's our goal here. And so that the difference between those two prices is going to be your payout. So if it stays at $100, your payout is going to be zero. That's not very likely. It'll usually go up some, uh, some amount. So that's why the value currently is around $10. But let's look at $125. And you'll see that the future value there is 25 bucks because that's going to be the difference and that's going to be the amount of your profit. The same thing with $150. You're going to see that the future value is going to be $50 and that's going to be your profit. Now a final word about this table. <laughs> We're just going through the math here and you have to realize uh, this is a market. 
and that for every transaction there is a buyer and there's a seller sitting across the table from you. And so, um, you know, it's nice to calculate out if there's uh, you've, <laughs> if the option to buy at $100 if the current price is $150, but likely you're not going to find a seller out there who will sell you that option um, because <laughs> it's very risky. So let's, let's bring this all back to the core concept because what we're doing here is we're calculating out the value of an option. And in the general sense, the more risky that option is, the less you're going to be willing to pay for it. And the Black-Scholes pricing model takes those five main variables and calculates out the exact value that you would be willing to pay based on your assumptions.